As he rode the bus one afternoon, a boy saw a black girl making a disturbing hand signal and called the cops. What happened next is very shocking. That busy afternoon, Julius was riding the bus to work and mentally preparing himself for another long shift at the restaurant. He had his headphones on as he was trying to catch a moment of peace and the chaos of his life. But as he glanced around the bus, something caught his attention. It was a tall black man sitting a few seats away. The man was flamboyantly dressed in flashy clothes that stood out against the more casual attire of the other passengers. Next to him was a little girl who bore a striking resemblance to the man. Even a dummy could tell that they were father and daughter. Yet the little girl looked withdrawn and sad. She clung to her father's side, but she maintained a downcast expression. Julius observed the pair closely, feeling that something was off. The man's eyes were squinting, his lips were quivering, almost as if he were high on some illegal substances. Despite his flamboyant appearance, he seemed to be constantly on edge. The man's eyes kept darting back and forth as if he were on the lookout for someone. The little girl, on the other hand, appeared too sad to interact with anyone. She just sat silently and stared at the floor. As the bus neared Julius's stop, the little girl suddenly looked up and made eye contact with him. There was something in her expression that spoke of distress, almost as if she were making a silent plea for help. When the man turned away to look at the window again, the girl did something that startled Julius. She reached for her throat and lightly squeezed it. Julius's heart pounded in his chest as he tried to make sense of what he had just seen. But before he could react, it was time for him to get off the bus and head to work. He was already some minutes late, which was a first for him, yet his mind was filled with thoughts of the little girl. He couldn't shake the feeling that she was in danger, but he didn't know what to do. As he put on his apron and got ready for his shift, he tried to focus on his tasks. Yet no matter how hard he tried, he could not get the image of the girl's sad eyes and her desperate signal out of his head. Then less than 30 minutes later, something shocking happened. To Julius' surprise, the same man and his daughter walked into the restaurant. Julius' eyes widened as he saw them. The girl's clothes had been changed to something lavish, which meant that the man had taken her shopping. Julius thought it was odd that such richly dressed people had taken a bus earlier. Now they were entering a high-end restaurant. Something didn't add up. Julius observed the pair closely as he approached their table. The man ordered an extravagant meal, rattling off items from the menu without even thinking about it. Another fact that did not escape Julius's notice was that he paid with crisp new bills. Despite the lavish order, neither the man nor the girl seemed interested in eating. The man kept glancing out the window, and his eyes darted back and forth as if he were on the lookout for someone. Meanwhile, the girl sat silently and sorrowfully, playing with her food and fork. As Julius served them drinks, his eyes met the girl's. She gave him a sad look that touched his heart. There was something in her expression that spoke of distress, almost as if she were making another silent plea for help. When the man turned away to look at the window again, the girl did something that startled Julius. It was the same hand signal she had given on the bus. She reached for her throat and squeezed it slightly, giving a clear indication that she was in danger. Julius's heart pounded in his chest as he tried to make sense of what he had just seen. He knew he had to do something, but he was unsure of what to do, so he decided to confide in a colleague. He pulled his friend aside and explained what he had witnessed. His colleague's eyes widened in concern as he looked at the man and the little girl's table. Something was up, and they had to do something about it, so Julius and his colleague both approached the manager to discuss the situation. The manager was a no-nonsense individual who prided himself on maintaining the restaurant's reputation, so naturally he listened to Julius's concerns with a skeptical expression. When he was done listening, he stood up and looked at the man and the girl from his office window. After taking a quick look, he swiftly dismissed Julius' worries. However, Julius knew that it was because the manager did not want to harass a customer who had placed such a large order. Additionally, he was worried about the negative publicity that might arise if the cops were called on a patron without solid evidence. So the manager instructed Julius to let it go. The restaurant could not risk offending such a well-paying customer. Julius reluctantly agreed, but he still felt uneasy about the whole thing. He continued to watch the girl, who seemed even sadder, even as the man attempted to joke with her. Her lack of response to her dad's teasing only deepened Julius's concern. When the man looked out of the window again, the girl looked at Julius and made another signal. This time, she ran her hand swiftly across her throat. This was a more urgent and desperate signal. This was the final straw for Julius. He could not ignore the signs any longer. He knew his manager would not listen, so he slipped out to the back to call the cops. 
He explained the urgency of the situation to the dispatcher and gave the restaurant's address. But as Julius ended the call, he saw something terrifying. The man and the girl were leaving the restaurant. Julius could see the manager smiling as he waved them goodbye. It had to be because of the generous tip the man had left. The manager and daughter got into a taxi and drove away, leaving Julius feeling helpless. He knew he had to do something, so he quickly memorized the taxi's license plate number. Ten minutes later, the police arrived on the scene. When the manager saw the cops, he was livid that Julius had called them against his orders. He tried to quickly dismiss the officers, claiming that there was nothing wrong. As far as he was concerned, the situation had been blown out of proportion. It was just an ordinary dad with his daughter. However, other waiters confirmed Julius' account. The man was indeed behaving strangely. They described how he had acted oddly and how the little girl had appeared distressed. This made the cops decide to investigate further. They took the man's physical description and jotted down the license plate number that Julius had wisely memorized. The officers assured him and the other staff members that they would look into the matter thoroughly. Yet as soon as the cops left, Julius received a stern scolding from the manager. He was really angry and threatened to fire him if he ever pulled such a stunt again. He insisted that he could not afford to create unnecessary drama in his restaurant and that Julius needed to learn to follow orders. The boy could only nod as he quietly accepted a tongue lashing, but deep down, he felt he had done the right thing. He knew he always had to trust his instincts, no matter what. His gut told him something was terribly wrong and he hoped the police would uncover the truth. After the scolding from the manager, the other staff gathered and patted Julius on the back. He was well liked by all, including the staff and the customers. Everyone appreciated his pleasant attitude and willingness to go the extra mile. The patrons asked for him by name, and his colleagues admired his ability to handle the pressures of the job with such grace. No matter what the manager said, they knew he had done well. Yet behind that cheerful appearance, Julius was struggling. He was a part-time student and he struggled with poor grades due to the long hours he had to work to support his family. His mother was ill and she required expensive medication. His father was absent, so Julius alone bore the responsibility of caring for not just his mom, but also his younger sisters. The weight of these burdens was heavy, but Julius never let it show. He kept his troubles hidden with a professional attitude, as he was determined not to let his struggles affect his job performance. But Julius could not let professionalism get in the way of helping someone in danger. For the rest of his shift, he remained distracted as his mind was consumed with thoughts of the girl and the man. He replayed the girl's gestures in his mind over and over again and he was sure that she was trying to communicate that she was in danger. He hoped that his actions would lead to her rescue and that the police would find out what was really going on. The next morning, Julius received a call from one of the officers who had visited the restaurant, who informed him that they were following up on leads. Julius felt a surge of relief as he knew that the police were taking his concern seriously. The case had landed on the desks of Detective Janet and Oscar, seasoned professionals with a long history of solving missing child cases. Their office walls were decorated with photos of rescued children and heartfelt thank you letters from grateful families. When they received the case involving the little girl from the restaurant, they knew they had to act quickly. This case felt particularly urgent due to the hand signal the little girl had sent. The cops contacted the taxi driver who told them the address he had dropped off the man and his daughter. They checked the resident of the address and it led them to a man named Luke Good. Luke had only one criminal record six years earlier. He had been indicted for fraud. He was booked and charged in court, but he never went to jail. This fact immediately raised red flags for the detectives. They also found it suspicious that Luke had driven from a neighboring town just to dine at a restaurant. Janet and Oscar knew they had to dig deeper. After getting the necessary go-ahead from their counterparts in Luke's town, the detectives paid a visit to his home. When Luke answered the door, he appeared startled to see them. Janet and Oscar introduced themselves and explained the reason for their visit. They came to check on his daughter. Luke looked at them with surprise. He said he was the wrong person because he did not have a daughter, but the detectives were not moved by his denial. They presented him with birth records showing that he did, in fact, have a daughter named Sabrina. Luke saw that he was caught in his lie, so he quickly changed the story. He claimed that he did not know if they were really cops, which is why he answered that way. He then told them that his daughter and wife were on vacation in Mexico. He even offered to show them flight tickets booked in their name. Luke's sudden shift in the narrative only made the detectives more suspicious. They knew he was hiding something, so they requested permission to search the house. However, he denied it. The detectives didn't have a warrant, so they had to take a step back, but not before glancing behind them at the apartment. The house appeared ordinary and almost too clean. 
In fact, there were no personal items that would suggest the child's presence or any immediate evidence of wrongdoing. The detectives had no choice but to leave. As they left, they gave Luke a stern warning about lying to the police. He only smiled nervously as he watched them leave. Of course, detectives Janet and Oscar did not buy Luke's act. The fact that his house was completely free of any evidence could be a major sign that he was hiding something big. As the detectives walked back to their car, they decided to keep a watchful eye on the house from a distance. From their vantage point across the street, the detectives waited, and sure enough, their patience paid off an hour later. The detectives followed him discreetly and dimmed their headlights so that he would not notice. Luke's journey led them to an old shack on the outskirts of town. The location seemed even more suspicious because it was far away from any eyes. Luke parked his car and headed right into the shack. The detectives parked a distance away and approached the shack cautiously. They could hear muffled voices and footsteps inside. As the detectives peered through a crack in the door, they saw a scene that made their blood run cold. The little girl was tied up and her eyes were wide with fear. Next to her was a pregnant woman who was tied to a chair. The woman appeared weak and semi-conscious, and Luke was trying to force a drink down her throat. This scene sent the detectives into immediate action. Without a moment's hesitation, the detectives burst through the door. Oscar tackled Luke to the ground and wrestled him into submission while Janet rushed to rescue the captives. She quickly untied the little girl and the woman before checking them for any injuries. The little girl clung to Janet as her small body trembled with relief and fear. She was finally safe. The woman was barely conscious and needed urgent medical care, so Janet immediately called for backup. Within minutes, the little girl and the woman were on their way to the hospital while Luke was taken to the police station. Once the pregnant woman regained some strength, she explained what had happened, and it was a harrowing story. She was Linda, Luke's wife, and the little girl Sabrina was their daughter. Both of them had been held captive by him for weeks. Their nightmare began when Luke lost his job for embezzlement. After getting acquitted in court, he turned to a life of crime and began making a living as a safecracker. Linda had consistently refused the proceeds of his criminal activities, as she wanted no part in his illegal endeavors. She rejected his expensive gifts and refused to go on any vacations with him. As a result, Luke had become increasingly paranoid and unstable. When she finally decided to leave him and take their daughter with her, Luke snapped. He drugged them and took them to the shack, where he imprisoned them. Luke's twisted justification for bringing Sabrina out that day was that it was her seventh birthday. It was the first time she had been outside in six weeks. To cover his tracks, he took her by bus to a different town instead of somewhere close by with his car. When he found out the cops were on him, he decided to end it all. The concoction that he was trying to make his wife drink was meant to cause her permanent harm. Had the detectives not intervened, Sabrina and her mother would have never been found. Janet and Oscar felt empathy for the woman and all she had been through. They assured her that she and Sabrina were now safe and that Luke would face justice for his actions. Back at the station, the man was booked and interrogated. Despite his initial bravado, it quickly became clear that he was a deeply disturbed individual. He had no choice but to confess and confirm Linda's story. Finally, after waiting a long time, Julius received the news he had been waiting for. The police had rescued the little girl, and his actions had played a crucial role in her rescue. The man had been arrested, and the girl was now safe, receiving the care and support she needed. Julius felt a profound sense of relief and gratitude. He had trusted his instincts, and it had made all the difference. As he went about his work at the restaurant, he was grateful for the chance to make a difference in someone's life. The case against Luke was solid. The testimonies of Julius, Linda and Sabrina along with the forensic evidence from the shack left no doubt about his guilt. Luke was charged with multiple offenses, including kidnapping and attempted murder. He was sentenced to 30 years of imprisonment with no possibility of parole. This ensured that he could never harm his family or anyone else again. Linda and Sabrina, surrounded by the love and support of their family, began to rebuild their lives, finding solace in their newfound safety and freedom. Linda's family was deeply moved by Julius's bravery. Without his quick thinking and determination to act on his instincts, Linda and Sabrina might never have been found. They recognized the impact Julius had on their lives, and they wanted to show their gratitude in a significant way. So Linda's family did something unexpectedly. They presented Julius with a check for $100,000. The sum was substantial, but it was their way of saying a big thank you to him. This generous gift was life-changing for Julius. He had been struggling for so long to balance his studies and the responsibilities of caring for his family. This check provided them with the stability he so desperately needed. With the money, Julius was able to pay off his mother's medical bills and ensure she was steadily supplied with her medication. He also set up savings accounts for his younger sisters to secure their educational future. 
the relief of financial stability allowed him to focus on his studies and improve his grades, which gave him hope for a brighter future. As word of the story spread, Julius became a local hero. His actions inspired others in the community to be more vigilant and compassionate. The restaurant where he worked also changed its policies. The owner replaced the former manager and put in new training programs to ensure staff could recognize and act on signs of distress. Julius's act of courage not only saved Linda and Sabrina, but also transformed his own life. What a shocking tale. What would you have done in Julius's shoes if you'd seen the girl signal she was in danger? Tell us in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.